In this video, we will discuss melanopsin, a visual pigment that doesn't contribute to vision, but it does tell us some interesting things about the eye. This is number nine in our series about color vision. Now, this video is not strictly about color vision. Rather, we are continuing the story of the opsins by introducing melanopsin. To understand where that comes from will require us to take a look at different types of photoreceptors as seen in vertebrate versus invertebrate animals. The discovery of melanopsin in a place where it wasn't expected gives us an important clue about how the retina likely arrived at its current structure. Before we start, you should know that this is not the same as the similar sounding melatonin. While both are involved in setting circadian rhythms, they are structurally different and are found in different places. Melanopsin is a protein consisting of many amino acids, while melatonin is a derivative of the single amino acid tryptophan. The first is found in the retina, while the latter is found in the pineal gland. In the last video about the opsin pigments, we saw the following. We humans have three opsins located in retinal cones, which are used for color vision in bright light. One opsin, the RH1, is in rods and is used for vision in low light. Now we are going to introduce a fifth opsin recently found in the mammalian eye called melanopsin, but it is not like the others. Melanopsin is functional. That is, it senses light, but it is not located in a rod or a cone, and it doesn't contribute to vision. It is found in a surprising place, in ganglion cells in the retina. Light sensing ganglion cells. How does that happen? In previous videos, we have talked about rods and cones. Located in the retina, they are the photoreceptors that we use to detect photons of light. In both types of photoreceptors, the light sensing structure has two parts. Retinal is the molecule that absorbs the photon of light. It is derived from vitamin A. The retinal molecule is embedded in an opsin protein. The retinal is the same for all the colors. The key point is that it is differences in the opsin molecule that determines the color of light each photoreceptor is sensitive to. Just so we are clear, for vision, we humans use these four opsins, three for color and one for vision in low light. To understand the significance of finding melanopsin in the human eye will require some background. First, we are going to talk about different families of photoreceptors, ciliary versus rhabdomeric. If rods and cones are brother and sister, it turns out they have cousins. In the animal kingdom, there are two lines of photoreceptor cells that probably came from an ancient precursor cell. One line is called rhabdomeric and is found mostly in invertebrates, like in squid and the compound eyes of insects. The other photoreceptor line is called ciliary. This type is generally associated with vertebrate eyes. First, looking at the rhabdomeric line, this is a diagram of the photoreceptor from a fruit fly. The main features are 1. Villi. These little fingers of protruding cell membrane serve to greatly multiply the number of opsin molecules in the path of a photon of light. 2. Recycling of exposed retinal happens in place using a second photon of light. 3. Rhabdomeric cells use a separate set of opsins called R-opsins, among which is melanopsin. Okay. The other photoreceptor line is called ciliary because the outer segment is a modified cilium. This type is generally associated with vertebrate eyes. These are the rods and cones. Here I am showing a rod. It is different from the rhabdomeric series in the following ways. 1. Instead of villi, it presents more opsin by using multiple membrane folds or plates. 2. In order to recycle exposed retinal, it has to go through a complex process where the used retinal molecule is shuttled to pigment cells 
chemically changed back to the active cis form and then shuttled back to the photoreceptor. Three, these ciliary photoreceptors use C opsins, which are the ones we have been talking about in previous videos. So here are the two photoreceptor lines, one line for invertebrates and one line for vertebrates, mostly. Now that we have photoreceptors in order, let's quickly review the opsins, of which there are two types. In general terms, type 1 occurs in simple one-celled organisms like bacteria and algae, so we will call this the microbial group. They participate in several functions. In addition to light sense, they also can act as ion pumps. Type 2 opsins occur in eukaryotes and higher animals. They are mostly used for vision with a small segment participating in circadian rhythms. As animal eyes evolved, the type 2 opsins branched off into several subgroups. The ciliary group occurs mostly in vertebrate eyes and includes the opsins used in rods and cones. Photoisomerase is the enzyme that changes the exposed transretinal back to the active cis form. Number three, the rhabdomeric group, occurs mostly in invertebrate eyes. To recap, the ciliary opsins are located in the rods and cones and mediate light and color sensation, otherwise known as vision. Melanopsin is a rhabdomeric opsin. Until recently, it was thought the rhabdomeric branch existed solely in invertebrates, while the ciliary type was confined to only vertebrates. The discovery that there was melanopsin in the human eye and ciliary opsins in invertebrate eyes was a surprise. That these two lines exist together turns out to give us clues about the origin of retinal structure. In previous videos, we have presented the retina as functioning with three layers of nerve cells. Located in the bottom cell layer are the photoreceptors, which receive the light and generate a nerve impulse. That nerve impulse passes through an intermediate bipolar cell to the ganglion cell, which gathers input from one or many photoreceptors and carries that information via a very long axon out of the eye and back to the brain. In the retinal diagram I have been showing you, there are two cell types that are not labeled. They are hiding behind the bipolar cells. Let me move the bipolar cells and introduce them now. Their names are amacrine and horizontal cells, and they provide important connections between cells within the retina. It turns out that ganglion cells and the amacrine and horizontal cells all appear to be related to and are probably derived from the rhabdomeric line. And that is how the melanopsin got to be in the ganglion cells. Rods, cones, and bipolar cells appear to have all come from the ciliary line. Bipolar cells having lost their expression of opsins because it wasn't needed. All this new information has given researchers a big step ahead in figuring out how the retina came to be wired the way it is. Regarding our new opsin, only a small percent of ganglion cells have melanopsin. We've gotten this far, so we should spend a little time describing what this newly discovered pigment does. In one experiment, a line of mice was bred to lac rods and cones. Then, investigators looked at their vision, pupil response, and ability to orient themselves to day and night cycles. Even without the usual light sensation from rods and cones, the mice still had some pupil response and were able to regulate their circadian clocks. Then they looked at another line of mice that lacked rods and cones and lacked melanopsin. In these mice, all pupil response was lost, along with the ability to set their circadian clocks. All these same features can be found in humans and may have application for intervening in our adaptation to light and dark cycles. What an interesting story melanopsin has uncovered for us. You can read more about melanopsin in the references.